Hey guys, fellas, we are at Style of Zug and today another collector talk, this time with Yvette Kerber. Yvette, thanks for coming. Thank you, Samuel, for the invitation. I don't know, honestly, if I'm a pen collector. I don't know if I'm the right ah. person for pen collectors. I think so. you are a pen collector, but we're going to dive into Let's that see. in a second, right? Because you have an opinion about that, and I love opinions, you know? So you have to understand, good fellas, that Yvette and I, she's a long-year collector. Um, she doesn't collect only here at Style of Zug. She's also a customer of Landolt Arbenz, uh, way longer customer than Landolt Arbenz than she's for, of, of me and um, I love to talk with Yvette because she's so knowledgeable not only about writing instruments but also about business and that's what I love about my customers and, and the people that we interact with. So Yvette, give us a bit of a hint about who you are because that's always very interesting. What do you do in life? What do I do in life besides uh collecting pens. Um, no, I'm a business owner, co-owner. We founded uh, several companies and um, I'm also a mayor of a city in Switzerland. And um, so I have a lot, a lot going on, like, like you, Samuel. <laughs> and <laughs> Not as much as you. <laughs> no, I don't know, <laughs> but let's see. And yeah, within my business, um, I'm very happy that one of my most important instruments is a writing instrument. So that's why I love pens. Mm -hmm. But as we can see today, um, for me it's uh, not only the pen, it's mm -hmm. not only at least not about pens, it's all, also about inks mm -hmm. and paper. Mm -hmm. Because for me the triangle is the real experience that I'm hooked to um, having a nice fountain pen together with an optimal ink. Mm -hmm. and a perfect paper that's that's the best experience you could get i i can't wait to dive deeper into this triangle that you're mentioning because uh, we haven't really done this until now and uh, i have to say yvette you inspire me a lot also regarding i mean you were the first one who showed me um, a traveler's notebook for mm -hmm. example and and you inspire me a lot about how you use your writing instruments for brainstorming and to to for for self development also and uh, i think that Writing instrument, also what we talk about in our channels, what we talk about in general when we talk about writing instrument, is the fact that the writing instrument is not just a fine item or a luxury item. It's a word that I don't like, but let's call it this way. But it is something you do something with in order to grow further and to create something in life. And so I'm doing now this monologue because you are totally the essence of that. And while we have an incredible selection here of wonderful writing instruments that are part of your collection, the nice part is going to be to understand how you, you, you put this in action. Before we dive, we dive into that, tell me please. You know, I like to do monologues, huh? I'm terrible. <laughs> um, tell me a bit, um, Yvette. Why don't you think you are, are a collector? You are definitely a collector. Look at this, and this is only a small part of the collection that you have. Um, why I'm not a collector? I would say, uh, I mean, you did a video on this um, on YouTube um, where, you, where you did the deep dive into how to build your collection and then what are possi possible elements, directions you could build your collection. And I would say, I'm none of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't, I don't collect in a sense just of the purpose of collecting. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, for me, as I said in the introduction, for me, the pen is a working tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to see it. Mm -hmm. So every pen I buy is a pen that will be inked. Mm -hmm. I don't have any pen or I never bought the pen that is, not inked. that is not inked. And you know, pen collection means to me, to a certain extent, you're, you're having a structure in, in why you're buying this pen or that pen. Or even uh, some people are um, after um, rising values of pens, which is, is really not my purpose. Mm, it's not I, your intention. No, huh? no, not really not. 
Um, for me, the way how I see it, I mean, I, I always, uh, I have a, let's say, a kind of a mental program, which, which is um, highly related to each of the pens. When I, when I start writing or sketching, because mm -hmm. I also sketch quite a lot mm -hmm. when, when I discuss with clients or also um, with colleagues. Um, in front of them? Yes, exactly, in person. Um, then I, I always have some paper with me and I always have um, a pencil with me mm -hmm. because beside um, the, the fountain pen, I also like to have a pencil with me here, for example, the perfect mm -hmm. pencil um, to sketch out, to, to underline um, what I'm explaining with some graphs. Mm -hmm. Because I think um, the, the most difficult part is to build connections in, of the essence in what you're describing to a person or what, what you're discussing with a person. And by sketching simultaneously or laying out a graph on how it is interconnected um, with each other and what we are going to do next, first you have a summary afterwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. You can take that piece of paper and, and your colleague can take it with you or you can just uh, make in a very easy and simple way a PowerPoint slide out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So it's multi, kind of multi-purpose multi use mm -hmm. um, of the sketch. And, and my experience is that people uh, do much more understand of a discussion when you're in parallel um, build some graphs, some mm -hmm. relations, and, and connect the dots. And while you do that, you're not doing that with just a twist B or a Lamy or whatever it might be, but you're doing this with fine writing instruments. Why? Yeah, exactly. That's a, a funny point. For me, it's, um, you know, I think always that, or I say to myself that every good idea is hidden in one of my pens. And I just have to write long enough and the, the idea will at a certain time appear Amazing. and um, <laughs> I want to have my ideas um, in the uh, covered with the best clothes and the clothes for the moment is, is a very nice pen and that's, uh, that's how I see it and uh, that's how I live it for many years and um, it always helped me also to build some anchors you know if, if I, can, I can really relate with every pen with certain milestones they have let's say, created as an idea in my life. Because mm -hmm. at a certain point, I, I know exactly, oh, in this meeting, there was this and this topic, and I know exactly with which pen you I You do, wrote. huh? Yeah. So if it's something important, it, yeah, it's I It's really funny, because I feel exactly the same way, mm -hmm. and, and it's difficult to explain that to someone that uh, is not into pens yet, but it really is exactly like this, right? Yep. That that you you create this incredible bond, which is a bond that is much stronger than uh, for something that you just wear and go around with. Yep. But the pen, at the end of the day, you use it and you do something with it, you create something. Exactly. As I said, the idea is already hidden in this pen Amazing. and um, it will come out at a certain point. And that's why I remember then with which pen or which idea was hidden in which pen. So <laughs> if, with, with you, it really is the, um, the quote that the pen is mighter than the sword. Yeah, uh, definitely. They're, they're weapons for you pretty much. Yes, it's like exactly. you, you, when you buy a pen, you're buying a weapon with, I mean, a positive weapon. Huh? Exactly. With, with whom you're going to attack the day, positively seen again, but um, it's going to help you to express yourself, your ideas, your creativity, and, and all those things that, uh, that will uh, grow your business also right yeah i mean it's for me uh, what resonates most is really the word creativity mm -hmm. because that's the essence in business to me mm -hmm. um, i think um, you can build a business in almost every industry but at the end it's all about having great ideas how to how to make uh, a perfect use of a momentum how to convince um, um, client, um, how to convince partners, or um, how to how to gain trust or build trust. Mm -hmm. It's it's all about um, base values in life. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, this is is uh, still we live in the digital world, but it's still um, a very in person mm -hmm. relationship which needs to be built. And and the pen is a very important tool um, that builds a relationship um, with me. And 
people, I guess, know by now that you don't have one pen and that you're sort of a pen collector. I mean, the people working with you, your empl uh, employees, uh, collaborators, uh, customers, uh, um, what do they think? What, two, two questions, Yvette. What do they think or what do they tell you? And what impact do you think it does on them? Yeah, that's uh, maybe a question where um, you don't like the answer that much, but let's see. Tell me. <laughs> I'll tell you if you um, don't like it. I have, I've um, experienced in life already certain pens that were just too loud, let's, let's put it like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I once had um, the Mont Blanc, the Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm. um, and this was a pen that immediately, as soon as I pulled it out, everybody was staring at the pen. And honestly, I see it slightly different than you. For me, the pen, it's not, it's not, the pen has not the purpose about making a statement. Mm -hmm. Making a statement is about me. Mm -hmm. I have to make the statement, not my pen. Mm -hmm. And I, want, I do not want to have any pen distracting from me from what as you're a person saying, yeah. and what and I'm saying person, and, yeah. and uh, Who you statement. Are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the pen should underline mm -hmm. my personality, but it shouldn't be too loud. You, yeah. know, you know I agree with this. <laughs> you yeah. know, I agree with this, but it is also true that uh, uh, I think we all, even subconsciously, want to make a statement at the end of the day with, doesn't matter with what we use and why we use it, we are trying to do a certain kind of statement because we could be doing a certain thing in, a cer in another way, but we decide, it, we decide to do it in that exact way. And while, yes, people with strong character like you and strong personality uh, do it because they want to do it. Otherwise, you would probably be collecting other things that have more resonance with, uh, with, with the mass, right? Uh, but I think you're still trying to, to, to uh, not you, but in general, I think even with writing instrument, we're still trying to say that we go the further step in, in life or, or am I mistaken with that? Yeah, it's a good question. I see them more as a company. It's for me to company. Um, they, you know, at a certain time also, I, I let some go of my pens mm -hmm. um, because time has changed and um, they fall out of time somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wouldn't see myself as a traditional pen collector because mm -hmm. there is no structure in my Mm -hmm. collection mm -hmm. yeah I, I didn't buy for example the Raidens because of the purpose of I want to have or build my Raiden collection yeah. this was not the case and why did you buy for example this amazing Raiden uh, of <laughs> Pelican you know it's it's a funny story honestly I didn't buy any of these pens at the time where they were <laughs> <Got> released <laughs> <laughs> so um, and to be more honest, even here, I didn't have any Raiden, I would say, one and a half year ago, um, mm -hmm. because I didn't, I didn't like the Raiden effect. It, 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 somehow they're exactly too loud for me. When you look at my pen collection, mm -hmm. most of the time I, I'm used to black pens mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. silver pens. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, normally, for example, like the... Uh, the edition here of Nakaya. Mm -hmm. This is what I brought um, especially with me because in the past collector's talk nobody was showing uh, many Nakaya, Nakaya pens so yeah. I thought um, it might be interesting mm -hmm. to also show off with Absolutely. some Nakayas. So uh, the piccolo with this also kind of uh, scratches um, on the barrel. Imperfection, Japanese yeah, imp imperfection. Exactly, the wabi-sabi, wabi -sabi, yeah, yeah. which goes into the wabi-sabi collection. Which again shows also your um, exactly. uh, kind of, of uh, spiritual uh, direction, you know, about imperfection, which is perfection at the end of the day, right? Exactly. Um, and I think um, I'm trying to have pens that are still, let's say, they're still strongly in design or they don't lose 
they don't fall out of time mm -hmm. because of their design, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I always, when I talk with, with my uh, business partner, we somehow sometimes come up with some examples. For me, I always said uh, the, the old Mercedes SL Cabriolet, they had a design line, in my opinion, which was timeless Just timeless mm -hmm. exactly and mm -hmm. and this is what i'm uh, looking for mm -hmm. so i'm more into finding um timeless designs mm -hmm. of pens mm -hmm. which are not too loud mm -hmm. and to which i resonate in a strong way mm -hmm. and and i think then it's somehow it is still it's just connected to certain dots in my life um, and, and, and why for example did you change if we take the example of the raiden yeah. uh, you you said you didn't buy it at the beginning you bought it afterwards when did you why did you change your mind <laughs> did something happen in your life in your business life uh, yeah, I think um, what what it all started about was the green ray. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when last year um, somebody was uh, talking to me about the Radens, the Pelican Radens, um, I went back home and I just considered it again and said, why do I don't like the Radens till now? Or why didn't I like the Radens mm -hmm. till now? And and if I, if I would have to buy one, which one would I pick? Mm -hmm. yeah? So I went through all the Raiden editions of Pelican and um, at the end I came up with the Green Ray. Mm -hmm. So I uh, did some search on Google and I, of course, uh, I think I also discussed with you, if, if you know I somebody remember we, who, I remember we talked about it. Who is selling uh, Green Raiden, Ray. Yeah. Yeah. And there was only one on uh, eBay. Uh, the one in, I think it was a seller in Singapore, which wanted to sell it for 12K, yeah? Yeah, exactly. which is just insane. I would never buy a 12K for a Pelican rate. So mm -hmm. uh, to make a long story short, um, one night I couldn't sleep and I went up and uh, was starting to work. And in between, I wanted to have a break and I was checking out on, on eBay. And then there was a student in, from Arizona who wanted to buy his green ray, never used, um, and he was just selling it um, for the normal uh, release price. So that was the, the, the moment when I jumped on uh, and Raiden said, and I said, to, okay, right? <laughs> now I have to because that's the only one I would go for, yeah. um, so I went for it. Um, so it all started with the green ray. Um, then I found um, the Starlight version mm -hmm. here at uh, London and Arbenz because mm -hmm. that's also one that is sold out already. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me, you know, sometimes it's funny. Um, some pens, they're just, they're just staying in my store and mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is no reason. Mm -hmm. And then I said, yeah, you know, because... Uh, you had to exactly. arrive and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it was because I had to change my mind first on the Radens. And uh, so that, that was the second one. Very interesting. And, and then? Then the third one was the White Ray. Yeah. Um, Where did you buy that one? Also on eBay. eBay. <laughs> it was uh, exactly for the same price like, like the Green Ray. So also normal retail price um, and, and no markup. Mm -hmm. So it was also the moment to say, okay, let's go for the green one. So it also shows patience and like, uh, exactly. you know, just look at things and then at some point the, op the opportunity arrives and you exactly. pick things at the right time, right? Exactly. And, and now I can tell you, I mean, the real start of the Raiden discussion, uh, but that's, that's really now an insider story, that was the 805. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't like the Raidens. Mm -hmm. The first one I said that's completely fine in my, let's say, design line mm -hmm. is the 805. Yeah. Because it's not loud, it's, it almost looks like dark white, it's, it's a stripe. Version it, it almost classic. It, it almost doesn't look like Mother of Pearl, right? Exactly. I mean, it doesn't look like a Raiden. Exactly. And, and sorry, this one was this was not the first one you had, right? I'm just starting to explain. Ah, that. okay. Exactly. <laughs> so I was at London and Orbans, and he had one. I said, okay, that's really the only one of the Raiden series that I could imagine to take it because yeah. this really looks perfect to me. I yeah. like it. I like it. It fits into my design line. And um, I think also because I'm more into, let's say, silverish, metal trims, metal uh, trims yeah. rhodium, less into gold trims. Yeah. 
So this, this was the one to go for. Yeah, and as it was the last one, um, and it was, an, of course, it's already um, quite an old version, mm -hmm. um, he had to send it to Pelican and it disappeared. It disappeared at Pelican, so my Raiden journey ended um, quite fast and um, there was no other one to go for me. And then, as I said, I went back and I said, okay, which one beside this one, which oh. one would I take? And then it was the Green Ray. And then um, after building um, or after buying then the Starlight, uh, I didn't know that, honestly. I just went uh, to Andreas and um, he, he showed up with a wooden box <laughs> and he was uh, hunting for that 805 Raiden again um, because it was lost last time at Pelican. And so this was really... Uh, a surprise to me Fantastic. that he was hunting for it um, because of that, let's say. Fantastic. That. What a Well, you see, what a beautiful story and what a context there is to, uh, a, to five pens that are laying here, which are wonderful pens, extremely well made, limited from an important brand. But at the end, the biggest meaning, you are giving the meaning. And now it even has a meaning to me because you explained it to me. So every time I will look at these pens, I will think of the story and understand exactly. all the background and the risk behind these incredible writing instruments. But honestly, this is it what uh, makes it so meaningful to me. For mm -hmm. me, it's less about the pen uh, itself, don't get me wrong. It's about the, uh, the stories we write with it, but yeah. also the stories that are behind um, how do you how do you gather it? How do you how did you got the yeah, pre piece? Huh? Exactly. In which and situation? With whom? Uh, exactly. And what happened in between? You yeah. know, uh, because it's also something um, which I have to say. Every single pen that mm -hmm. is here on the pen, on the table um, has a special nip grind uh, to my way of writing because mm -hmm. I'm slightly when uh, Andreas is always making fun of me. Um, because when I write, I slightly shift or tilt the nib to the left. Mm -hmm. And so very often pens are getting scratchy. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. have a scratchy feeling. You would mm -hmm. say feedback for feedback? me. Feedback? No, you don't like the feedback, <laughs> right? <laughs> you like the you know, I, I, I find it so funny, <laughs> feedback. I mean, what is feedback all about? For me, it's just scratchy or smooth, but different. Okay. No, I, 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 you, you know what I think about it. I think it's a good point <laughs> that we mention it. I think it's... Uh, um, the, the amazing thing is the fact that every nib feels different. It feels different because of shape, of size, of nib size also, but also of how it sounds. And yeah, I mean, they are a bit scratchy. We can call it scratchy, we can call it feedback, we can call it how we want. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's about the thing that one gets. I like it, you don't, and that's the, perf that's the amazing thing about it, right? Yeah, but what I think even more means to me that you can change the feeling of or the writing experience of the nib by using different inks yeah. or different paper. Mm -hmm. So I have many pens um, that I would say they feel a little bit scratchy to me, but as soon as I use, for example, the Pilot ink, they don't scratch anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the ink to me is like more oilish, <laughs> if you want so. Yeah. It's also a bit thicker, in yeah. my opinion, yeah. and that takes a bit of that scratchy yeah. part away. Uh, so cool to hear about that. So tell tell me, which are the inks? Can you name like five inks where you get, really get the feeling? Because I'm oh, yeah. sure the viewers are going to love to try that out. Name me five inks where you have this exact thing. I love this about the Collector Talks, by the way. This is so, I mean, even for me, it's so enriching, uh, Yvette. Uh, we talk a lot, but still, I learn every day that I talk with you. Yeah, for me, for example, the Pelicans, as you know, they're, I mean, I have to admit, I'm more on the fine uh, nip side um, yes. and the pelicans are not really on the <laughs> fine very nip juicy, side. Yeah. <laughs> exactly the, uh, uh, exactly and so for the pelicans for example this is a very wet um, and I would rather say medium medium to broad um, nip but for example if I use the Graf von Faber Castell the green moss mm -hmm. ink mm -hmm. it's perfect <laughs> so if I have a pen where the, the nip is a bit too broad to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. I can quite often use the Grafenfarbe Castell Moss Green mm -hmm, Ink, mm -hmm. which makes it 
half as broad as, uh, for example, the pilot ink or even the sailor. If I have a pen that is a bit uh, on the drier side, sometimes it happens with, with F nibs, then of course the sailor ink is a, is a good choice to go for because it's, it's more flushy, it's more wet in my opinion. Um, the pilot ink, as I said, is a go-to in the Namiki pens, for mm -hmm. example. Um, I also like the pilot ink in, um, in the Grafen Faber Castell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one? For example, yeah. Which, this... by the way, is a marvelous writing instrument. Yeah, I love that As one. It's a little excerpt <laughs> on the side. <laughs> where we keep on going with the inks, but beautiful writing instrument. I'm sure many don't know it. Yeah, I mean, um, this is, honestly, I don't know when they stopped doing this uh, version. Four, four years ago. Four years ago, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Five. It's uh, the Intuition mm -hmm. um, uh, series. I personally like uh, wooden pens, mm -hmm. um, even, I've, even I'm not drawing that many um, today. Mm -hmm. But this one was a nice, nice edition of Grafen Faber Cassel, yeah, sure. Um, the Intuition. I find it very comfortable holding the pen Marvelous. because it's all wood, the grip section. It's not like with all the other pens um, where you have normally kind of a different uh, uh, grip section. Mm -hmm. So this is a very understatement pen in my opinion, but mm -hmm. also timeless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the wood as a material um, is, is something I appreciate uh, very uh, much on pens. I love this model very much to Yvette. I think that they stopped it. Uh, well, there, there was also the resin version. Um, surely they stopped the wooden one because it would get bicolor because having the cap on it, then mm -hmm. one part would be... But Correct. I love it too. And you actually influencing me into finding one for myself because uh, I want to have it in my collection. That's that's truly awesome. Yeah. Um, Wonderful, and thanks for, for explaining us uh, about... When did you buy this one? Years ago? Five, six years ago. Five years ago, oh, six years ago, amazing. And so, so, sorry, let's keep on going with the inks now. The inks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, it's really an easy, an easy part in my opinion. I think um, what one should know, or what I at least experienced with my pens, maybe other people have different experiences, mm -hmm. is that every single pen behaves differently with different ink mm -hmm. brands. And what I do first when I buy a new pen, I try out my, let's say, uh, different inks, mm -hmm. and I try to, to figure out how it behaves mm -hmm. and find out the optimum um, in between pen and ink yeah. and paper, the, the major triangle to create that, uh, yeah. And Emotional. here really comes out your expertise as someone that uses writing instruments since a long, long time. Uh, way bigger expertise than, than I have in, in, in that sense for sure. I mean, if I had a question about that, I would call you yeah. and ask you about it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, yes, I work in it and I'm surely confronted a lot with the industry and all the stories behind the, 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 the pens. And, but, but the usability uh, is then another thing. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're, we're really, for me, it's so inspiring to talk to you and get to know all, all of these things. And I learn so much. And I'm sure everyone who's watching right now is also learning uh, so many interesting things. You mentioned Moss Green, then you mentioned Pilot. Tell me another two, two inks that you, that, where, where you have a special mix, uh, where you say like this ink behaves in this way. Yeah, as I said, um, I personally um, can maybe say that, for example, with this dorsalfin here mm -hmm. of um, Namiki, Nokaya uh, Namiki, <laughs> and uh, with this nib, I had some issues um, because I'm also a person who does not apply uh, much pressure mm -hmm, while mm -hmm, writing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the nib allows you also yeah, to play with so that. Flex, of right. course, um, so. The flex nip has, of course, uh, the characteristics of um, being more playful with the pressure you're mm -hmm, applying mm -hmm. to in your writing. Mm -hmm. And so it was important to me to figure out what could be the best ink to, um, to make it, let's say, to make it feel good for mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. if 
even not applying pressure. Mm -hmm. And I figured out in this pen that, for example, here now we is Mont Blanc, the Ferrari, the limited um, edition of Ferrari the ink. The purple one. The purple one, yeah. which is a perfect match with this mm -hmm. pen. Mm -hmm. I tried it first out with the Pilot ink. And it wasn't feeling and right? It, no, uh, because <laughs> it was skipping. Without um, applying pressure, I had um, many skips, especially. And with the Ferrari one, it... No skip. But this is amazing. And, 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 you know, now it comes in, I mean, it, normally, yeah, of course, I would, uh, of course, uh, rely on Andreas uh, to make the, the nip a bit more wet on mm -hmm. the wetter side so mm -hmm. that there is no skipping. Mm -hmm. But with this nip, I mean, that's the purpose of mm -hmm. the nip. You mm -hmm. want a vari mm -hmm. uh, variety of, uh, of line exactly. uh, while you're writing, right? And so that's why there, there is no nip tuning needed on this pen. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. It was more a question, what is the perfect uh, ink to mm -hmm. make that pen feel right to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantabulous. And if, since we, we have now talked inks and, uh, and writing instruments, what about the paper? You're, you're a big expert on paper, you use different kind of papers. Uh, if we take the mix, the, the triangle you mentioned, close it a bit down for us and let us understand how much paper makes has an influence. I don't know if I'm, if I'm an expert, uh, Samuel. I you are. <laughs> I, I, uh, I just um, try to figure out what is the best paper for my purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And so, what, for example, is important to me, let's make some examples. The, the perfect pencil, as I explained at the beginning, um, I often use also pencils. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and for example, if the paper um, is um, too, let's say has a too glidey surface, like the Rhodia paper, mm -hmm, for example, mm -hmm. then there is no, with the, with the pencil, there is no real, um, absorption of the graphite on the paper because it slides too smooth on the paper and it, it looks then like an H um, uh, grade of a pencil, which I don't like. I'm more on the softer side mm -hmm. of pencil. So I need a um, very good paper, which I could use, can use for fountain pens and mm -hmm. for pencils. Mm -hmm. And for me, a good choice is definitely the Tomoe River paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is even the, the new one from Chantan. Mm -hmm. um, and this paper I like very much. I don't have to be careful on drying times um, of the ink because I'm not a lefty. Mm -hmm. uh, I write right-handed. So I, I don't care about drying times on inks and, and paper. Mm -hmm. But of course, for people who write more right on the left-hand side, they may consider also this kind of aspect. Mm -hmm. um, for example, travel notebook, which you I mentioned, mentioned last. I, yeah. A few minutes ago, um, this paper is more on the on the difficult side for left for left-handers um, because drying time is longer. Yeah, because it's a flatter yeah, kind of exactly. paper, right? Yeah. And also, what about the Smithson? Yeah, I like this paper. Um, I bought one at your shop and mm -hmm. tried it out. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I like the look and feel. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's um, really quality paper. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I'm not into lined paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we already had that discussion. <laughs> I'm I'm the plain paper type of. Because I do my sketching, you know, the, the line somehow doesn't feel right yeah, to me. Yeah, it disturbs you. Exactly. It disturbs it gives you too much. It gives you too much uh, too reference, Too narrow-minded. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it always gives you the feeling that you somehow have to stay <clears throat> within this line width. Which is not us, right? <laughs> We're not staying within the no, lines. <laughs> definitely not. So this is the only reason why I don't use the Smyson Piper for business purpose. Mm -hmm. But I have to admit, it's a perfect paper or notebook for journaling mm -hmm. type of style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for general purpose in my daily life, uh, my one and only to go is my Tomoe River. Tomo, the yep. Tomoe River. Yep, okay, definitely. super, super interesting. Tell me. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, finish one sentence here. I mean, the, the binding itself doesn't look nice, of course. So this is uh, something where you have to go for... a nice leather cover, uh, which I also use. Uh, you have a special leather cover yeah, exactly. for the Tomer River. Exactly, yeah. 
Okay, that's super, super yeah. nice. There, there are some nice ones on the market, I it's think. Surely something I'm going to add to my to my store, the Tomo River paper. I, I'll have to add it to my store. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're building slowly, step by step here at Style of Two with, with notebooks. But uh, uh, definitely, I, I love to hear this feedback and also gives me purpose on, on why adding, adding it up. Um, if I, I'd like to go a bit deeper into into the pieces that you have here, and maybe hear a few short stories on why, and maybe let's start from my from my left, and we'll, we'll go over here. You mentioned a bit the babi sabi, the concept of of the babi sabi that also goes into the nakayas, uh, but we also have some nice namikis, Graf, Mont Blanc, and we have Otto Hutten, Graf von Faber Castell. We have talked about the intuition. What is your feeling about the design 08 of Of Hoot? course, a question that you had to bring up. <laughs> yeah, um, you made me buy this. <laughs> <laughs> I forced you? Yeah, forced me, definitely. Um, no, I, I mean, it's true. <laughs> but uh, uh, what I have to admit is um, I'm personally really into Bauhaus. So what inspired me or what forced me beside you was my uh, relation to Bauhaus and I really liked the design. I mean, some people were mentioning that they don't like the grip zone. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is, is really very individual. Mm -hmm. It depends on how one is holding the pen. Mm -hmm. I don't apply that much force mm -hmm. uh, when I hold a pen. I'm more on the loose side mm -hmm. on how I hold my pens. So I'm not, I'm not feeling disturbed about the grip section. Regarding this specific thing that you're saying, I think it's very nice we're, uh, we're mentioning that. You have different kind of pens, sizes, uh, weights. Uh, do you feel like you adapt yourself a bit to the writing instrument? Because I'm a big purveyor of that. I say, uh, the pen cannot adapt to me. I must adapt a bit to the pen. And then obviously I'm going to choose uh, the, the right writing sensation for myself. How do you feel that? Yes, I do that. Um, I do that too. I adapt myself to the pen, except the nib. Except the nib, absolutely. But um, the weight, the size, yeah. the length. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was hesitated to uh, use, for example, Emperor's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because my hand size is not that Emperor. big. Emperor. <laughs> Not that emperor, exactly. Um, that's why I don't have many emperors. I, Can I? Yeah, yeah. I only have one till now in my collection. Um, that's the only one. Uh, and this one I just bought because out of the emperor collection, the the whole uh, night scene or let's say pavilion topic is, is a topic that I relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, and all the other ones are a bit too loud again for me. From the design perspective, you can see also all the Namiki pens here are more on the yeah, reduce it to the max, let's put mm -hmm, it like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about these Nomikis. Mm -hmm. Beautiful pieces. Uh, Yvette, you're using this on a daily basis. Yes. Uh, you, yes. And they're all inked, you said. Yeah, they're awesome. all inked. Awesome. That's nice because we, we made the shift from uh, the Otto Hood Design 08 to the Namikis. Uh, uh, but again, you have a Yukari, you have Yukari Royale, you have an Emperor. So uh, it just relates again to what we have just said. You really adapt your, your writing style. And do you feel also that there is specific pens that are perfect for specific occasions? Uh, or, or we, uh, yeah, you got to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Questions pop, to, pop up my mind. How do you choose if you're going to use a specific pen at a specific time? Why are you going to use a specific pen at a specific time? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes um, it depends a bit, a bit uh, what kind of clothes color I'm wearing mm -hmm. because um, I'm in favor with uh, matching uh, sometimes, of the course. Look. Yeah, it can also be a contrast, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes this could be an aspect. Then a bit uh, also the question was what is on my agenda? Mm -hmm. um, where am I mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. um, at this day? Then also um, a bit of um, what, uh, what work do I have to fulfill mm -hmm. today? And sometimes also even just if, if I need something nice to look at, 
which I'm in the mood. Mm -hmm. um, because during meetings, I can really hold just a pen in my hand and also sometimes look at my pen, which helps me then to focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Focalize, uh, yeah, focus on things, yeah. Exactly, focusing on things, a pen brings me every time back to the present. And mm -hmm. um, that's why I also very often hold a pen while I'm speaking to mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. like uh, you in, in this, this case. case yeah. <laughs> um, or if I'm just focusing in front of my computer, um, a pen could be right next to me. And as soon as my thoughts are drifting away, mm -hmm. when I look again at my pen, Boom. I'm in the, in the present. Moment. Yes, ah. back in the moment, back in the present. And is there a pen that you would, uh, where you're like, okay, today I, ha I want to have no headaches, I'm going to go for this pen. Is there one or not? you're not that type of person? Um, I have to admit that every single pen doesn't give me headache. And this is uh, something else I have to say. I mean, when I buy a pen and I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. at the end because mm -hmm. of the nip it's too scratchy for me it mm -hmm. is skipping mm -hmm. or um, it does not perform well on on a certain paper or I don't find the right ink mm -hmm. for me it's really a journey mm -hmm. and I'm always committed to go to this point where the pen behaves perfect in a sense that I can take Every well, single pen, and, and you can just and go for it. Exactly. And uh, Andreas always uh, makes a joke about that because he, he's saying you, you buy different pens, but every single pen has to behave exactly the, the same, same way. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and that's really true. Yeah. But I see it different because I say, you know, there is one exact feeling I want to get to with a pen yeah. and, and then I'm in the flow. So it's like um, with football players, for example, you say you got to listen to a specific playlist exactly. before the match. Exactly. This is your routine in order to get into yeah. the, the creative yeah. flow. Exactly. Amazing. Event. This is Amazing. It, the way how I see it. So other, others could make jokes about that, but uh, that's No, 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 no. I think everybody's <laughs> going to appreciate that very, very much. This trio, Pirelli, Ferrari, but... The Mark Black. Uh, people are going to love to see this one, and I love to see this one too. Um, the Marc Dolay. Um, I just really love the design of that mm -hmm. pen. I mean, it was nothing special mm -hmm. when it released. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, true, true. I think, uh, at least what I got... No, it wasn't like... Oh, the Martellet is out. The Martellet is out. You know, <laughs> the Martellet is now in the collection. Exactly. And now everybody's looking for yeah, it. Exactly. This is this is exactly what I found um, very funny. That when it was released, nobody was taking care of the pen. And nobody was aware about it. And it was nothing special. It was just a Martellet pen. A Martellet pen. Exactly. And um, as you said, then people started um, looking and hunting for it. I personally really Beautiful. love that pen. Can I see it? Yeah, yeah sure, go ahead. Um, because it's, it's a timeless piece of Mont Blanc. Um, and I have to admit, uh, I told you that at the very beginning that I'm not looking, let's say, for a price increase in my mm -hmm. pens. Mm -hmm. As I'm using my pens, I would never get a good price for my pens. Mm -hmm. And, um, you would for the Martellet. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it's used, you know, it's uh, under... Uh, heavy pressure and daily work this Absolutely. pen is used and I don't know I, I this is not a pen I'm, I want I will sell in the future I think mm -hmm. because it's really a timeless piece and I love it that much it has a very nice snip it's even an F nip on mm -hmm. this uh, pen and um, 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 beautiful I love also it. the patina that it yeah, develops over 925 time. 925 sterling yeah. silver, so it gets darker. You tend to polish them? Uh, look, sometimes, This looks yes. polished. Yes, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. You um, like to, to see China again. I, I polished again. I polished it especially for this uh, talk today. Ah, okay, <laughs> perfect. You have also a design C, right? 
Yes, okay. I have a design C also Fine. because you pushed me to of do course. it, to buy it. I hope you're happy when. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's also I, again. Um, as you know, I'm not into auto hood that much, yeah. but I have uh, two design zero eight and one design so you, C. You're so still this, quite committed to it because <laughs> these are those are the pieces that I would also buy. Maybe design seven, but I mean design eight, design C are the pens that I absolutely love uh, uh, of auto hood. You you know that. German, German, German. German or... Food. German. Vikings? Uh, the Viking, uh, to me, I have, as you know, I have several pen of the years. Um, I, I brought or I selected these two first. Mm -hmm. I mean, this one is the one that you have selected. <laughs> yeah, because true. I didn't want to bring it. True. I wanted to show it because... I, I often talk about it, but it doesn't get shown too much. But it's a wonderful pen, I think. Tell me, tell me For about me, it. For the, me, the nicest one is definitely the Viking. That's Viking, my yeah? favorite, yes. Because of what? Because of the Vikings itself or the, the mix of material? I would say it's the mix of material. Again, <laughs> it's a very decent pen. Mm -hmm. Even it's if it's a big pen, you mm -hmm. know, because especially with the pen of the years, people um, look at the big cap mm -hmm. of the pen, which is which is quite present mm -hmm. when you when mm -hmm. you hold the pen. Mm -hmm. um, so the Viking is a quite decent one. Uh, that's why I like it. And also, again, we are talking about wood again, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which um, is a perfect material, Absolutely. in my opinion, for pens. I, I really love it. And, and why did you decide to buy the, um, the, the Knights? You like the, the look of it? I like Damascus. Oh, you like Damascus yeah. still? I yeah. bought it because of the Damascus um, material here in that case. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not so much into the overall look of the pen. Okay. Uh, that's why I wouldn't have brought it because it's, I don't know, but you still use it? Yeah, yeah, I still use it and it has a perfect nip. Okay, that's But great. it's not my favorite. Let's it's only your favorite, yeah. your favorite design. Let's put it like that. Well, Yvette, what a collector talk. Uh, I think uh, truly, truly amazing and, and deep and with so much context that goes from your business to your personality to um, why you select certain pens, uh, what do they mean to you, what kind of uh, the ink, what meaning they have or how much they help your pens to perform. The, the paper, probably one of the most comprehensive collector's talk that we, that we have had. Unfortunately, we're going to keep the name Collector Stock also for your, okay? I'm not going to change the format because of you, Yvette. <laughs> but, but, you know, the amazing thing is the fact that this Collector Talk is meant to show to the, to the now the wider and wider audience that we're getting the different personalities and the, the, all the mentalities behind collecting writing, uh, fine writing instruments. So... Uh, thank you, thank you so much. I don't know if there is anything else specific that you would like to mention uh, uh, about about your pens or so, something also to end up this beautiful conversation. No, I think we, we covered almost everything uh, that is important to me when it comes to pen. And um, thanks for the chat here. Yeah. No, I thank you so much for your time. You're very busy. I know that you now have a full schedule the, the rest of the day. As you. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> We're trying to build something. Yep. Well, <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Yvette, for this uh, wonderful, thanks, uh, wonderful conversation. Uh, and guys, thank, thank, thanks all for, for, for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. There is more collector's talk coming very, very soon. And at this stage, uh, we would like to thank you very much and to say to not forget that together, we are changing the game. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs>